Hello, welcome to a model kit review of the high grade Universal Century Shinanju. Uh, a few things before you open up the box uh, it's 1 to 144 scale, uh, it's number 116 in the high grade Universal Century line, and retails for approximately 2600 yen. Okay, so we'll open the box up. On the inside, we have the manual, standard high grade Universal Century manual. Um, contains what everything you need to know. With some uh, examples of the finished work. The kit itself contains. 10 sprues. Uh, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we have two of these ones and a polycap sprue. Put that aside. Uh, the marking sheet, which are all, in this case, all uh, foil stickers, um, which are generally which is standard pretty much with the with the high grade line. Now into the sprues. Uh, first sprue we've got here. Most of the red pieces. Pretty standard. Uh, we've got some of the inner frame. Get this out of the way. Uh, yeah, the inner frame. Parts of the feet here. Um, knee joints etc. Uh, the opposing side of that piece, so all the uh, all the opposite pieces to go with the pieces of that frame. Some more red bits of armour. The black pieces. We've got the propellant tanks up here, uh, some of the yellow trim. Um, and most notable on these pieces are the raised details there of the Neo Xeon emblems um, on the shield, on the chest, um, then parts of the um, sleeves and stuff. There's another one there just on the forearm sleeve and collars. That's what I like about these Universal Century Unicorn kits, uh, the Neo Zeon stuff's details of the emblems that are pretty well done. Uh, another piece of red, uh, we've got pieces of the head there, uh, the main shield, bits and pieces of the legs, um, The uh, weapons parts, a bit more, some more of the frame. So you got the waist part there, the internal waist, uh, plus the axe and the uh, bazooka parts, or the beam rifle parts. Uh, your stock standard yeah, polycaps, which all this is pretty much the standard with this line of kits. Uh, it's polycap run at 132. Uh, for those who don't know. Bandai actually produce a large amount of different polycap runners. Um, they've all got certain numbers, and certain numbers go with certain kits. So um, this runner, this runner of polycaps, might be used on a, on another kit somewhere down the line because they're all using similar style. So instead of producing one dedicated one for one single kit, they make a generic one that'll fit multiple kits. Finally, uh, just the beam effects, which look uh, pretty sweet. Got the uh, the added detail inside there, slightly frosted. Um, which looks pretty nice. And that's all. So that's the contents of the box. Uh, so what will happen now is... Um, I'll go away, build it, 
be back later on with some more on the high grade universal scenario okay so I've built him uh, it's taken me about two and a half hours um, but a little bit longer than normal because I've actually gone through and just cleaned up the, the uh, sprue nubs as I went um, and this is what you see in front of you is what's in what you end up with um, this is every single part from the kit so there's no leftovers um, so we'll start with uh, some of the added extras so what we have down here we'll start with the weapons uh, we have the uh, the beam rifle this has a moving scope sight on there and um, it's quite neat nice details this part opens up here a few things uh, should be worth mentioning is uh, there are seams like most high grade weapons there's always a seam that runs up the center uh, this will require a bit of glue and a bit of putty just to remove that seam from there and the same from underneath pretty stock standard uh, when it comes to high grade couple of beam sabers with a new style of uh, beam usually you get the old just a little bit of a thing down the end and uh, just a round bit of plastic but this is nice and flat and has jagged edges so it looks more like a beam than just a bit of yellow plastic so there's two of them uh, we have the uh, just a little clamp that plugs into the, into, uh, the back of the Shinanju's waist that, that's to hold the beam rifle onto the back if, so, if you so wish to some extra hands now your standard hand for the rifle which has the trigger finger plus a left and right open hand so to hold the, the beam sabers or the, uh, the beam axes beam axes as I was saying um, there's two of these and yeah, there's a good gimmick with these um, you can actually make a double ender by clipping up both like so pushing them together now there's one whole beam sober double ended beam sober um, they can just they just pop apart um, later on whoops uh, later on if you wish um, but that's a handy little gimmick if need be uh, a couple left over beam weapon uh, beam axe parts but I'll show you what they're for they're for something else uh, we've got the shield nice raised detail there um, the black part the red part on the back we have a another gun down the bottom here um, this like the other beam rifle has a seam down the center so that will need to be removed um, that's your standard connection to, to, to your um, to the arm now with, this, with some of the older ones uh, the, this plug here is usually a round plug but these newer ones um, they're a square plug they actually fit more snugly into the arm and they tend less to fall out now with the shield you have these two parts of the beam axe um, which are movable like so but what you can also do is take them out and swap them over like so and attach these other smaller parts of the VMAX weaponry effects push them down there like so and you actually have the beam weapons built into the shield uh, this is optional of course so you can either have it like that or you can take it off and put it back to how it was which is just a matter of just unplugging these taking off um, taking off these ones and putting them back on now there's locating pegs just here for the top um, and you'll see there's a matching square on the other side there they just sit in like so 
and when you do the bottom there's little pegs here that this section here will um, hold them in place it's not a firm but it stops them from moving around so all you have to do is lift them up a little bit and they'll, they'll turn um, that's quite a nice little gimmick now onto the kit this is the finished product 1144 scale um, as I mentioned in the unboxing part um, quite detailed for a high grade kit uh, a lot of these unicorn Xeon kits are well detailed in stuff like the, um, the raised emblems and raised edges in the trims um, details such as the extra armor panels are quite nice uh, you still get a lot of these blank no panel lines that sort of stuff on the armor trims uh, which can be rescribed in so you get a couple of little ones like you do on the back here but uh, nothing you'd see in a, in a 1 to 100 scale or, or above um, posability is not too bad the skirts in one piece which can be modded to move independently um, but the front and the back can lift up side skirts lift up like so um, legs you got quite decent mobility um, it's worth noting this point the knees do have a seam so the knees will need to be the seam needs to be removed from the knees um, details with the, the leg armor here this side piece can come off and be adjusted so to have the thruster shooting backwards which is a part of the actual suit's, actual mobile suit's design so it can swing around shoot the the thrusters out the back there so that can be done as well uh, the shoulder design's not too bad uh, not much mobility that way because of the shoulder hitting the um, top of the torso there it's not too bad uh, the this part of the shoulder arm comes up, you've got a couple of thrusters under there near the arms as you know it's, the arm's got full full motion that way um, and that's as bad as far as you're going to get it going up ways head doesn't have much movement um, mainly because of the um, the top collars there pop this off so you can see a bit better um, just the top collar there stops a lot of movement well you can get it all the way around but you're not going to be able to do a lot um, your back thrusters here now yeah, these can either open or close like so and are fully movable to that extent. A couple of fuel tanks. Uh, it's hard to see with this, but there are seam lines running down the centre of each, which is understandable for a high grade. Um, but what they have done well down the bottom here, there's no actual seam line through the bottom. There's a bit of flash there that needs to be cleaned up, but the actual seam one part will come down and come right across and have the whole bottom piece on one half and the other piece clamp, clamps together so there's no actual seam down there, just a bit of flash that needs to be cleaned up so that's pretty good but still, um, you still have to remove that seam which can be a bit of a pain but if you've got a flexible sander um, like so, like one of these um, it's quite easy to do Um, now we'll just talk about, let's take this off um, with the back of the head uh, which is a bit of a pain um, there's actually a seam line right up the centre 
and you do have a it runs through one of the details of the um, back of the head there which is a bit of a pain and also it's the same piece um, but underneath there it's very hard to see there's a very tiny seam line in there that needs to be removed as well uh, no seam lines here it's all one piece like you'd see in a master grade so it's one whole section that goes over uh, the waist parts I do have a problem with these because they've got, they're made of that soft material that's similar to polycaps so it's going to be very difficult to paint um, so most likely these probably get a, a light sanding and uh, just a top coat because the paint's just not going to stick to this type of plastic um, I can see issues already uh, last seam lines that need to be talked about are on the forearm uh, are in here same with the uh, Cassatria two halves go together over the top of um, the elbow joint which is a com which is common with the um, high grade kits but a lot of these newer ones are, are starting to do away with that sort of stuff I just wish they'd do it quicker because it's it's they can do a whole piece up here but they can't do a whole piece down there so I don't understand why but oh well just another scene to be removed and there's another scene but we won't be it's difficult to see um, up inside on the shoulder piece and the thing I don't like about this is it's right across this detail you've got the, the lines going this way and you're going to try and remove a seam that goes that way so if you're going to remove that seam you have to rescribe every single line um, but since this shoulder arm is going to be down like so you're not going to see it so I'm not even going to attempt to remove that seam line because it's not going to be visible at all but if you were to um, pose it up like so yeah you'll be able to see that so it depends depends how you want to pose it in the end I'll just put this back together while I keep talking um, overall look it's a wonderful kit there's a few seam lines there that I really wish wasn't there but being a high grade you have to expect it um, if it was a master grade and it was doing stuff like that then I'd be really disappointed on it on a newer kit on an older kit, yeah, I'd understand, but on a newer kit, yeah, it's a bit. Saying that, this kit is a, this, um, the Shinanji, is a few years old now. So this was sort of the first run of the new, new sort of designs they were using at Bandai. So you've got the Unicorn, and then the Shinanji, and then the Kshatriya, and then all this sort of stuff from Unicorn that were that were um, needing extra details and stuff. So saying that. It's a very good kit. Um, having a leg posability like so in a higher grade is very good, in my opinion. Um, not that I'd really care, to be honest, <laughs> because I, usually, I don't usually pose my kits like that. I'd usually, you know, have one foot forward, sort of a pose, arms up, looking menacing, head on the sideways. Um, so overall, it's a very good kit. A few seam line issues, such as your knee, the head, which, and the forearms, the two that are really bugging me are those two. Um, but they're easy enough to get rid of if you know what you're doing. And um, weapons are great. The beam saver um, details are very nice and crisp. The slightly frosted uh, effect is quite nice. And um, it's highly recommended.